Welcome Climate Viewers, my name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com, ClimateViewer.org, and WeatherModificationHistory.com. It's August 8th, 2018, and today we're going to talk about geoengineering with diamond dust and how HARP is involved in creating noctilucent clouds and how they're on the rise. Um, I'm sure that some of these terms may be new to you, but I assure you by the end of this video you will be well versed in all of this terminology. I hope to uh, break it down in graphic detail for you. So please stay tuned for some crazy crap. Um, so the article's already up on climateviewer.com, uh, links in the details play along at home uh, for those who are watching the live broadcast. Geoengineering with diamond dust and harp, noctilucent cloud formation rising. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and blow that up for you guys. And uh, this, this really started back with an article that I wrote in 2014 called Harp and Project Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And it's a very interesting article. Um, and it talks about HARP and how HARP is used to generate sunshine reflecting noctilucent clouds in increasing amounts in the mesosphere which will reflect the sun's energy back into space. Noctilucent clouds formed by the breakdown of methane in the circular zone above the HARP transmitter. And that four other similar facilities in the world, High Pass, Arecibo, Izcat, and Sura, Russia, um, could also be used for uh, doing methane to diamond dust conversion. Now, I'm going to throw a lot of links at you guys very quickly, so buckle your seatbelts. Um, the article from 2014, Harp and Project Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, is about the Arctic Methane Emergency Group and how they came up with these three projects. The Arctic Natural Gas Extraction, Liquefaction, and Sales Angels pro Proposal. Uh, extraction, Liquefaction, and Sales of Natural Gas is fracking. So we want to frack the Arctic to save us from methane. Project Lucy Extended Version 4 is the presentation on the Lucy transmitters, uh, which convert met atmospheric methane into diamond dust. And the scientific paper behind this is Radio and Laser Frequency Harmonic Test Ranges for Lucy and Harp Experiments and Their Application to Atmospheric Methane Destruction. Oh my god, these scientists have the longest titles ever. I don't know why, but that's just how they roll. Um, and you can see that that was originally posted on my first blog, Resonated.net. Um, January 15th, 2013, and it was under a similar title, but this was the actual paper. And that paper came from Arctic News Blog, uh, which is run by John Neeson, who is the founding member of the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, AMEG. And there's the title, and it was written by Malcolm P.R. Light, October 7th, 2012. So, What's going on here? The Arctic Methane Emergency Group is a group of concerned scientists who say that trapped methane under North Pole's ice cap could abruptly uh, erupt into the air and kill us just like it did with the dinosaurs. So they have a video here, The Day the Oceans Boiled. You can watch it video link there. But what they basically say, AMEG says, is that up to 50 gigatons of methane could, re, re, could be released abruptly anytime soon. And so in order to save us from a methane doom, they sent a letter to world leaders called their strategic plan. And in that strategic plan, uh, they said things like, Let's use bunker fuel to make uh, ship tracks. Let's uh, figure out contrails and encourage flight past the commercial airplanes to reduce positive and increase negative net forcing. The ban on polar flights recent lifted recently should be reintroduced. 
Um, yeah, we should prepare supply and logistics of spraying aerosol precursor in large quantities, preferably in the lower stratosphere for deployment by next March or April. That would be 2013. Prepare for large-scale deployment of titanium dioxide or sulfate aerosol. Um, use marine cloud brightening with a view to a deployment in spring of 2013. So, um, finance the development and, de and deployment capability for cirrus cloud removal. That's chemtrail removal. Since this promise is a promising technique, it's also called cirrus cloud thinning or cirrus cloud seeding, something I've covered in depth on climateviewer.com. Suitable chemicals need to be identified, confirmed with stockpiling of these cloud seeding chemicals. Aircraft need to be kitted out to spray these chemicals. Finance brainstorming sessions for geoengineering. Um, so this was their letter that they said, consider techniques for unsticking of blocked weather patterns, like the ridiculously resilient ridge um, but it's, it's pretty nasty. You know, their plan, their strategic plan calls for geoengineering and it's John Neeson, 2003 at gmail.com. If you want to harass the guy. Um, but basically the UK government responded to AMEG and they said that, you know, it's too early to make these kinds of decisions. And I know that you think the ar entire Arctic is going to melt, um, by 2015 but still, we shouldn't go ahead with these reports. Government response to Environmental Audit Committee based on non-existing observations says AMEG link um, to their response to the UK government saying no geoengineering. And that would be the end of the story if it weren't for all of this Lucy in the Sky with Diamond stuff. So that's where these harp quotes come from. Um, you know, that Project Lucy transmitters three radars focusing their beams on methane clouds and turning those methane clouds into diamond dust, something formerly left to the science fiction world of alchemy. Yes, I wrote this. Um, and then a quote here from John Hesher, Hesher, director of HARP, where he talked about creating noctilucent clouds using heart so this gets really weird really quick let's blow this up even more so the technology methane in the air is decomposed in between radio transmitters that each use slightly different radio frequencies one using 10 megahertz that's heart another using 23.56 megahertz and together they would produce a 13.56 megahertz radio frequency that would decompose atmospheric methane. But it goes further. Project Lucy radio and laser atmospheric methane cloud detection, energization, and methane destruction. And what they basically say is using three separate Lucy transmitters. These are mounted on boats. They are harps. They are ionospheric heaters. Um, that they could compress ionized hydrogen release from water and methane rises and combines to form H2. Methyl group gases and oxygen. Three-dimensional radio trans interference pattern set up. Three 13.5 me megahertz transmitter ships. So this 13.56 megahertz frequency they believe will turn methane into diamond dust. It says the transmitters can be mounted on submarines, planes, and after 2015 on boats and drilling rigs when the Arctic ice cap has melted. They wrote this in 2012. Boy, were they wrong. Um, Malcolm P.R. Light and Sam Carana, 2012. Um, and this would be fine, you know, if any of it were true. But what we found out is that, you know, methane isn't coming from these clathrates, these frozen hydrates underground. Um, in my personal opinion, they're coming from drilling. And to back that up, let's see if the link's still there. Natural gas the, the, and the invisible spill, how much methane is reaching the atmosphere? Um, this is from April 10th, 2012. 
And they say that uh, Total SA's platform has uh, been spilling around 7 million cubic feet of natural gas every day since it started blowing out. Um, so that's, a, that's where the methane's actually coming from. Uh, but they don't want to admit that. Um, their, their Arctic natural gas extraction, liquefaction, and sales proposal says... Let's go to the Arctic and drill with different platforms to suck the methane out of the North Pole before it becomes clouds. And then if it does become atmospheric methane clouds, let's turn that into diamond dust. So while they're saying let's save the Arctic, they're also saying let's frack the Arctic. Oh, by the way, let's do geoengineering with diamond dust and we're going to use HARP to do it. Um, crazy stuff indeed. So I have all the references here, um, different versions of their presentation on the Project Lucy radio transmitters. Um, and you can read all about that. So, and there's the original paper there, um, 2012. Well, this would be great if it were true. But this whole methane doom thing, it comes from something called the clathrate gun hypothesis. And it's a popular name given to the idea that increases in sea temperatures or drops in sea levels can trigger strong positive feedback effect on the climate. First, warming causes the release of methane and methane clathrate compounds buried in seabeds and seabed per permafrost. Second, because methane itself is a powerful greenhouse gas temperatures rise further and the cycle repeats this runaway process once started could be as irreversible as firing of a gun so this is where you hear the term runaway global warming it comes from what's called the clathrate gun hypothesis and a clathrate is a frozen piece of methane ice it is methane ice buried in the ground, buried under the ocean, buried under the permafrost. Did you know that the BP oil spill was caused by drilling into, wait for it, a methane clathrate? So they hit a methane ice ball underground and it blew a hole in the, in the drill rig because obviously methane is explosive so many methane um you know fails have happened over the years and i've actually mapped a couple of these on climateviewer.org and you can come to climate change and you can go to drilling wells and methane releases and you can see them like the world's largest uh, 2,500 square mile cloud of methane floating over the southwest. Um, obviously the BP oil spill, which was caused by drilling into a methane hydrate. Um, the total SA methane leak. How much natural gas is um, the, in the invisible spill, the one I just referenced. Um, the door to hell. Darvasa gas crater, which has been burning for well over 40 years. Um, it's a methane drilling accident that occurred. Um, and over in Japan, Jomek, and they have started doing fracking on the ocean floor. So these are all real things, you know, that they don't want you to talk about. They just want to blame it all on climate change. So where does this clathrate gun hypothesis come from? Well, it turns out that they went up to the North Pole and you just, you just can't make this, this part up. They went and they did an ice core sample. So they drilled into you know the, the ice and the permafrost and they went back to where the dinosaurs were. And they said right about here were the dinosaurs and we see a lot of CO2. And after that, we see a whole lot of methane. So this clathrate gun hypothesis comes from this. No joke. Dinosaur farts contained a lot of CO2 and methane and warmed the planet. And those dinosaur farts 
melted clathrates of ice of methane, which then vented into the air and caused runaway global warming. That's where AMEG gets their idea from. That's where this clathrate gun hypothesis comes from. That's why you see the quotes in the article saying that 50 gigatons could be released abruptly at any time soon. And that's what's in this picture at the top. You know, oh look, there's a whole lot of methane showing up on our sensors. Well, that's, that's because of what's called fugitive emissions. And they've said that up to up to 60% of a fracking well can release its methane into the air. Just that alone should be a shocker. But luckily for all of us, the USGS, Geological Society, said, Gas hydrates and climate warming. Why a methane catastrophe is unlikely. June 2012. So... Crisis averted. I know you probably heard a lot about methane on other anti-geoengineering websites, but crisis averted. Even the USGS says this is total BS. So gas hydrates and the clathrate gun hypothesis, probably full of crap. Um, oh wait, that's not the only people saying it. Study finds hydrate gun hypothesis unlikely, fizz.org. And this is dated August 23rd, 2017. So despite what you hear about clathrate gun hypothesis, um, and you know, people who talk about runaway global warming and how the whole world's gonna burn up just like the dinosaur farts caused, um, this global runaway global warming crap is debunked, at least currently by science. But that doesn't stop the Project Lucy in the sky with diamonds um, geoengineering idea. So what do we have here? I covered this. I'm the only one that I know did. Geoengineering Solar Radiation Management Science 2015. And uh, this happened right before COP21. It was the last uh, meeting they had before COP21 where they were talking about, you know, how to sell geoengineering after COP21. So um i covered all the videos in this you know live broadcast i was at the live webinar for this um you know harassed them with some questions and stuff you can see all of these videos um here's the original page srm science 2015 engineering the climate uh 12th through 14th march 2015 in cambridge uk um, I actually asked several other prominent geo anti-geoengineering websites to protest this, uh, none of which even mentioned it. That should be a raging clue for you. This is all in a um, uh, playlist on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Jim Lee dash climate viewer. And you can see all of these videos, plus some of the videos I did to follow up on uh, what occurred there. But I want to bring to your attention this one in particular, because I think you're going to find what David Key says about diamond dust particularly interesting. Um, so how would we do this first of all we'll talk about how well it would work in a second but how would we do it uh, in some sense it's kind of horrifyingly easy to do it uh, so the way i've thought about the most involves putting sulfuric acid uh, basically an air pollutant in the stratosphere where it would reflect away a little bit of sunlight why sulfuric acid actually a droplet of water in the stratosphere reflects sunlight fine really almost as well as a droplet of sulfuric acid but it would evaporate essentially instantly the stratosphere is very dry so if you want to keep water droplets there you need something to hold the water molecules from evaporating and that's what the sulfuric acid is there for uh, there are lots of other things we're investigating diamond and alumina and other things that might or might not be better did, well, what what was that, David? Did you just say diamond and alumina? 
sulfuric acid is there for. Uh, there are lots of other things. We're investigating diamond and alumina and other things that might or might not be better, but that's one example. Another idea is to use uh, sea salt sprays to increase the reflectivity of some kinds of marine stratus, the kind of low like the marine cloud brightening project, but regardless, that dude just said diamond does. We care about, and actually I already overstated because I said would, and I really should have said probably will or some of them. Um, so how would we do this, first of all? We'll talk about how well it would work in a second, but how would we do it? Uh, in some sense, it's kind of horrifyingly easy to do it. Uh, so the way I've thought about the most involves putting sulfuric acid, uh, basically air pollutant in the stratosphere where it would reflect away a little bit of sunlight. Why sulfuric acid? Actually, a droplet of water in the stratosphere reflects sunlight fine, really almost as well as a droplet of sulfuric acid. But and they're doing the sulfuric acid through jet fuel by increasing fuel sulfur content. So they're doing that too. But what I find most fascinating about this panel discussion is that in 2015, at the SRM 2015 conference, before COP21, he mentioned the diamond dust. But it would evaporate, essentially, instantly. The stratosphere is very dry. So if you want to keep water droplets there, you need something to hold the water molecules from evaporating, and that's what the sulfuric acid is there for. Uh, there are lots of other things. We're investigating diamond and alumina and other things that might or might not be better, but that's one example. Another idea is to use a sea so you get the picture. So David Keith, um, you know, he he's talking about using diamond dust. I mean, so now we have not just a theory by the Arctic Methane Emergency Group talking about using diamond dust to cool the planet. We got David Keith at the Solar Radiation Management 2015 conference saying, hey, we're investigating using diamond dust. So... The story moves on from there. Uh, let's see what we have next. So I actually was covering, um, you know, this SRM 2015 thing, and on David Keith's website, Keith.Cs.Harvard.Edu, you'll notice that he actually cited me <laughs> um, right here. You'll see. SRM Science 2015, Geoengineering SRM Science 2015 videos available at climateviewer.com slash 2015 slash 03 slash 20 Geoengineering SRM Science 2015 videos. So I actually got cited um, by the AGU, by Peter Irvine and company, and this is hosted on David Keith's website. Um, kind of cool. Uh, and creepy all same time but regardless this became a reality so then here we go October uh, 2015 right before the COP21 conference after David Keith said we're doing you know we're looking into this climate scientists ponder spraying diamond dust into the sky to cool the planet this is no joke next up this is uh, October 27th, 2015. Dusting the sky with diamonds is the latest crazy scheme to cool the planet. Gizmodo. And Newsweek. Diamond dust in the sky could cool the planet, says climate scientists. Are you kidding me? This is October 28th. So this is like three days in a row. They're, you know... Boasting about diamond dust. This is all leading up to COP21, the Paris Accord, the agreement on climate change. And basically, you know, there's a reason for all of this. Um, and I'll show you. DC leaks, Hillary Clinton supports geoengineering, er, climate intervention. So during the DC leaks, I'll drop this link in chat for you guys. It's not in the article. I'm, I forgot to put it in there, but I needed to. Um, basically, they John Podesta formed a, a, a super PAC called the Energy Future Coalition Steering Committee. And they talk about geoengineering and how they need to do it 
after COP21. And there's John Podesta, or uh, John Holdren, that was uh, Obama's chief science guy talking about geoengineering. He supports it. You can see the original document here, Microsoft DocX PDF. Um, but John Podesta, you know, he loves geoengineering just as much as, uh, as uh, Hillary Clinton does. And these are all of the people who are in on this. The Dashiell Group, Center for American Progress, Yale University, Turner Foundation, AFL-CIO, United Nations, University of Colorado, Denver. Um, and the list goes on. Guests, you know, all these people. Um, but, you know, we call this albedo modification, not solar radiation management. We simply do not know enough to manage the sun's radiation. So what are we doing? We're reflecting sunlight. Um, it messes with the ozone and the stratosphere. It changes how precipitation falls. The more you try to understand, the less certainty we have. Different models give you different answers. Um, but, you know... We're not going to launch a big effort before Paris. That's the takeaway. This is from DC Leaks. This is about Hillary Clinton and John Podesta and their little super PAC that said, hey, everything we talked about at SRM 2015, we're not going to really push for geoengineering till afterwards. Why? Because, you know, people might not agree to clean up their emissions if we go ahead and say we have a solution, but we need to be prepared to do geoengineering on a big scale the minute COP21, the Paris Agreements, fail to do what they do, they say they're going to do. And that's exactly what they did. Um, it's not just Paris that's driving that we're not getting research in geoengineering. It's the fact that the U.S. Congress doesn't want to fund the research. So... Read this article. It is fascinating. This is inside scoop stuff from DC Leaks. Um, DC Leaks Hillary Clinton supports geoengineering or climate intervention. So, but where were we? So, back to the diamond dust thing. Now, I cover all of this in my article 10 Technologies to Own the Weather Today. And as you can see, Noctilucent and Clouds, they're right about here. Um, there's a, that's the video. Here's the actual image. And you can see that noctilucent clouds are way up there, around 50 miles in the air. So how, double what planes fly. And so you'd ask yourself, you know, how could they be creating noctilucent clouds? Well, they've already said we could do it with harp. Um, but they can also do it with sounding rockets. They have created them with sounding rockets. Um, they can do it with cloud ionizers, um, but mainly with the sounding rockets. They can spray, you know, uh, these chemicals up there to, they could literally spray the diamond dust directly into the sky to do this. So what, why am I talking so much about noctilucent clouds and diamond dust? Well, wait for it. Once rare cloud is now more common and new study says climate change is to blame. Wait a minute now. So I thought that, that AMEG and all of these guys said they wanted to make more noctilucent clouds. And now there are more noctilucent clouds. Oh, but it's just a coincidence. Um, right. Noctilucent clouds, Earth's highest clouds are now in view in parts of the Northern Hemisphere. June 28, 2018. Appearance of night shining clouds has increased. April 10, 2014. That's a noctilucent cloud. Shiny blue electric clouds that are normally produced by meteorite dust. But they just keep appearing more and more often. Rare shimmering nighttime clouds on the rise, NASA says. April 11th, 2014. All of this is after 2012 when AMEG proposed the, the Project Lucy thing. Um, and, you know, slightly before the SRM 2015 uh, conference where David Key said, let's use diamond dust. And oh, by the way, diamond dust would create noctilucent clouds. Let's make noctilucent clouds over harp. So 
I came across this uh, pretty interesting. There's a paper. Uh, this is on projectpossum.org about noctilucent clouds. Nice little video, time lapse of what they look like. Um, some photographs of it, how they do ground observations with uh, green sodium lidars with sounding rockets. Oh my gosh, not sounding rockets. Why would you do that? Um, with aircraft, with satellites, um, and this is what they look like from space. So Project Possum is now the Possum Airborne Noctilucent Cloud Mission. They got a fancy logo and everything. And they're talking about flying planes up into the um, Noctilucent Clouds to figure them out. But regardless, this is all happening over the Arctic out of sight. Pictures are missing. I could probably dig them up on archive.org, but we're live and I don't want to make this much longer. Um, but regardless, uh, you know, this whole Noctilucent cloud thing is getting kind of weird because A, nobody's talking about it. B, there's clear evidence that the Arctic Methane Emergency Group which believes in the clathrate gun hypothesis, which believes dinosaur farts are killed the planet, and that we are now farting too much and we're going to melt the methane hydrates, so we need to turn you know, Arctic methane into diamond dust to save us. And oh, by the way, that's gonna you know, um, turn it into noctilucent clouds. So a couple of articles at the end here from strange, Sign of the Times. Strange skies, red sprites in Oklahoma, Aurora Steve in Canada, iridescent clouds in Illinois, and noctilucent clouds in Denmark. June 2018. And you can actually see those noctilucent clouds right here. There's Steve. And some uh, pictures of the noctilucent clouds right there. So, crazy stuff, guys. It's uh, it's an it's a topic nobody's really bringing up. Strange but beautiful skies, noctilucent tornado cloud auroras, double and twin rainbow plus a midnight rainbow, and there you go, um, noctilucent tornado cloud. Very interesting stuff. So these noctilucent clouds can be created according to the geoengineering, you know, supporters, scientists. Um, by microwaves, by sounding rockets, and they're on the rise. Are noctilucent clouds increasing because of cooling climate and the rise of fireball and volcanic activity? July 3rd, 2018 on Sign of the Times. And he goes through a whole bunch of responding to all of this stuff. I suggest you guys read all of this. It's very fascinating. Um, but at the end of the day, this is what's going on, guys. Geoengineering the planet with diamond dust to create noctilucent cloud formation. And I read in Ken Caldera's geoengineering group a quote, and I couldn't find it before the video. I already spent enough time. It's kind of late. Um, I'll probably find it tomorrow and add it to the article. But... They basically said if people knew what the Arctic Council was up to, they would be up in arms. And what they're re probably referring to is these experiments. Because noctilucent clouds are, are generally um, limited to the North and South Pole. And so they're, they're out of sight. They're out of mind. We rarely ever get to see them unless it's through photos from somebody else. But... If this is a true agenda, if this is the goal is to create electric blue clouds high in the sky to reflect sunlight and to do it using harp and things like that, then people should know about it. So harp and Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Um, please check out the article on climateviewer.com. Please read it. Read the references, share it, and uh, you know, tell people about this because it's it's a very little known topic. Nobody's talking about it, and more people need to know. 
Um, especially about the John Podesta, Hillary Clinton link to the, the SRM 2015 and COP 21 Paris agreement. Um, you know, they planned for this before Paris. They, they said that Paris was going to fail and, uh, that's exactly what they ended up doing. Um, you know, they, they, they basically ensured that Paris was going to be a failure and, uh, and then, you know, said, well, you know, since Paris was a failure, hey, we got to, you know, we're going to have to do this geoengineering. Um, big surprise, right? Um, one second while I'm trying to dig up one last, uh, one last article for you guys real quick. See if I can find it. Here you go. And this is just the icing on the cake. WeatherModificationHistory.com, November to December 2015, geoengineering necessary to meet COP21 goals. Our back's against the wall, and now we must start pro process of preparing for geoengineering, the letter said. We must do this in the knowledge that its chances of success are small and the risks of the implementation are great. The Paris Agreement commits countries to a system of voluntary national climate action plans which reviewed every five years in a bid to keep the average global temperature increase below two degrees Celsius and ideally below 1.5. However, according to official estimates, current national plans will result in temperatures increases of almost three degrees Celsius this century. And the letter dismisses the idea far more ambitious plans and targets will be agreed in five years as naive. Um, and the list goes on on this one. Academics call for geoengineering preparation in wake of Paris Agreement's deadly flaws. So they did the SRM 2015 before COP21. They mentioned the diamond dust. They mentioned sulfuric acid and all the other ideas. They went, they had their little agreement. Um, obviously, Trump has pulled out of the agreement. And that's why they say, well, then we certainly have to geoengineer because this was the setup all along. Um, and I did a video on this COP21 agreement, geoengineering will be necessary. And you can see all these people from COP21 who basically say the same thing. But, you know, here's the articles for that. Does the Paris Agreement open the door to geoengineering? Uh, lots of references right here on that article. But it, it, it's not looking good for us. Geoengineering necessary to meet uh, COP21 temperature goals. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. So this was the setup. Can we achieve the Paris climate goals without unproven technology? And that unproven technology is geoengineering is creating diamond dust clouds all over the, the Arctic to save us from runaway global warming, which isn't even a thing. Um, so thank you guys to everybody hanging out in the Facebook chat. Uh, what about Brennan? Yeah, I cover Brennan and his, uh, talking to the council on foreign relations about geoengineering. <clears throat> I've covered the CIA's involvement in geoengineering many, many times. Um, you can read all about it on climateviewer.com to search for, uh, climate viewer CIA and you'll get a ton of articles. Um, but you know, this is, uh, this is some crazy stuff and it's not being talked about anywhere. So I hope that you guys will continue to support my work. I hope that you'll continue to share these articles on climateviewer.com. They are creative commons, uh, meaning that you are free to copy these articles and paste them anywhere. As long as you provide a link back to the original and that it is non-commercial, meaning you do not sell it. All I ask is that you support me monthly with a donation on Patreon or one-time donation on PayPal. I greatly appreciate it. Everything I do is free of charge and for the greater good. So this is a, you know, a crazy story. I hope that you guys have learned a lot. 
and I hope that you will share it because sharing is caring. So with all of this information comes power and with great power comes great responsibility. So I hope that you guys use that responsibly and attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.